Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MU stand. This is your preview for Manchester United versus Crystal Palace. Straight off the bat, this is this is the lineup that I think is going to face Crystal Palace on Saturday. So Manchester United obviously are looking to boost our top four hopes in this uh, Premier League when we actually welcome Crystal Palace to Old Trafford on Saturday. Let's go over the team news. Uh, who's injured? Who's available? Sabatzer, is he actually going to start in this match? We're going to take a look at that. In this show, we are going to cover the team news, like I said. The current form, head-to-head, -head, predicted starting 11, and uh, finally, the score prediction as well. So be sure to stick around. If you were just tuning in, don't forget to smash a like on the stream. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Let's go straight into it. Team news, as you can see here. Uh, we have to cope with Christian Eriksen. Obviously, Christian Eriksen is out, so United have to cope without Christian Eriksen until April due to uh, an ankle injury. Uh, Donny van de Vick and Scott McTominay are also out with respective knee and muscular uh, problems. Diego Dalot is still nursing a hamstring injury, and he remains doubtful. Sabatzer is clear to join the team which means he's actually his uh, his visa is actually has been cleared up so he can actually play on saturday against crystal palace and i i expect somehow i expect him to be involved in this match as for crystal palace uh former man united winger welford zaha is is actually facing up up to six weeks out with a hamstring injury so he joins uh james mccarthy uh, and with the groin and Nathan Ferguson, who's also out for Crystal Palace. So these, these players are out for Crystal Palace. But let's just go straight into it, guys. Let's go straight into it. So this is the lineup that actually uh, started against Nottingham Forest. Do put your comments in. If you just disagree with any of these lineups, please let me know in the comment section and I'll try to get through them one by one. Uh, let's start off with with the goalkeeper. So Tom Heaton started the game against Nottingham Forest. He did well. This is a second chance now from Eric Ten Hag that he gave Tom Heaton. So two clean sheets. He hasn't done anything wrong, but I don't expect him to start against Crystal Palace. He's just going to have to wait for his chance to, to, to compete and, and start games for Man United. So I expect David De Gea to return in goal. Right back position, like I said, right back position, Juan Basaka has remained to be solid. He hasn't, put, he hasn't put anything wrong, to be honest with you. So far, he has been solid. And I expect him to continue in that position. Unless, of course, Dalot is available. Even if Dalot is available, I think he might have to be given 30 minutes here, 20 minutes there before he actually been given a starting role in this team. We don't want to rush him back into the team. So Juan Basaka would remain as the right back. So Rolls Royce Varane will be here. I'm not going to make a change on him. By the way, there is actually a news on Varane. Varane just announced, if you're not aware, Varane just announced that he's retired from France international football team. So just, just for your information, he has retired and that's been announced today. Martinez obviously we'll start again in this match against crystal palace uh, we cannot take crystal palace lightly guys we cannot take them lightly let's not forget they took two points off of us just a couple of weeks ago so we cannot take them lightly and we have to go really strong and eric ten Hag is not messing around we've seen it even though we won the first leg in the carabao cup in the second leg he went with a very strong team so we're going to do the same in the weekend as well. I expect the same thing. Uh, Luke Shaw will stay there. I don't think Malasia has a chance to, to return to the uh, starting 11. Before I talk about the middle of the park here, I, I, I want to mention that Sabatza, this guy, this guy, we got to talk about this guy. I mean, we can't just dismiss what he is actually going to bring uh, to the team. We've seen it in the past. He can Sabata can play as a number eight. He's uh he, he can also play as a number nine. He offers so much versatility into the team. Uh, he's very progressive ball passer as well. He comes in with some kind of like dynamism to complement Casemiro 
and Fred. So this is a very good signing, people, especially given the fact that we lost Ericsson for a long period of time. Getting to sign a, a, a loan deal with Sabatzer. Obviously, we want a Sabatzer that was playing for Leipzig. We don't want the guy that was playing for Bayern Munich because he wasn't getting a lot of minutes for Bayern Munich. He has lots of qualities. He is actually two-footed, striking on goal as well. He's very good at striking the ball uh, from distance. We've seen highlights. You can check out the highlights. This guy can bring a lot. I'm telling you, he can bring a lot to the team. Very dangerous player uh, from set piece and dead ball situations. So massive, massive signing. And I expect him, I expect him to play against Crystal Palace. I do expect him to, to play against Crystal Palace. He does have his visa work all sorted out. So he is going to be available for the game on Saturday. We were talking about the middle of the park. So Casemiro, like I said, Casemiro, the beast, the master, the king, whichever you want to call him, he is going to be there. No discussion about that. I don't think any single person in this world would, would disagree with not starting Casemiro in this match. So he'll be there. This guy, this is the discussion, people. Is Fred going to start against Crystal Palace? Let me know in the comment section. What do you guys think? For me, Sabata should, should be given a chance. I think Sabata should come in and play. I know Fred has scored in the previous game. He did okay against Nottingham Forest, but we know Fred doesn't create a lot of chances. We know that. Fred can offer you a lot of energy to ease tenacious. He's not the type that can replace Christian Eriksen. He's not the type that can go deeper into the uh, into defense, get the ball from Martinez and Varane in this deeper role and start creating chances and progress the ball. He can't do that. Uh, clearly, Fred cannot do that. And McTominay can't do it as well which is the reason why we bought Sabatzer. And my expectation is Eric Ten Hag will start Sabatzer in this position. So Fred comes off for me, Sabatzer will be playing in this position. But Anthony Fabi will keep his position in that right-hand side. Let's be clear, it's, it's, not, it's not guaranteed. Soon he's gonna have to start performing. He might find, him, he, uh, he might find himself next to Harry Maguire, which is on the bench. It could happen. Eric Ten Hag just does not play around. So he could find himself sitting next to Ten Hag. So he needs to keep up uh, and he needs to improve massively. Number 10, Bruno Fernandes. Obviously, Bruno definitely played that number 10 role. We've seen Bruno uh, being useful on the right-hand side. What we saw yesterday, by the way, the last 30 minutes, if you guys, I don't know if you guys noticed it. And the commentators didn't even uh, talk about it. But this is what we saw yesterday. Sancho playing as a number 10. And he did mention that. He did mention that after the game. That Eric Ten Hag mentioned that Sancho can actually operate as a number 10. So who knows? Who knows? We could see this lineup, guys. We could see Sancho behind the striker and Bruno Fernandes out wide. But for now, like I said, for now... I'm going to keep Sancho on the bench. He has to fight his way back into the starting 11. The man, the legend, the guy, Marcus Rashford. This guy is on fire. He is hot. He is hot, people. He is hot. And I expect, I expect him to start. Obviously, everybody expects him to start, but I expect him to start out wide. We're caused again. Not my number one choice. We got Toto back now. Anthony Martial. He is going to be the striker. I think he is going to start against Crystal Palace. Ten Hag has mentioned that time after time after time that Martial is his number one striker. Even when Cristiano was there, he was saying Martial is really key to the way how Man United are set up and to the way how that forward lineup is fluid and how they play uh, to the strength of each other, how they press together. That is key to the team. So Martial will be selected as a number nine. So there you have it, people. There you have it. This is the lineup I think is going to play against Crystal Palace. Teams form. So teams form in the beginning. Coming into this game, we won three games. We lost one game. We drawn one game. Crystal Palace, they have lost three games and drawn two games. So they're not a good form. They have not won 
in the past five games. So we have to win this, guys. We have to win this head to head. OK, so looking at the head to head, uh, the past five games, we've drawn. We've drawn um, two games, one, two and lost one. So got to win this one, guys. We got to win this one. Top scores of each team. Zaha is the top scorer for Crystal Palace, but he's injured. He's not going to be available for the match against uh, United. So nothing to worry about there. Rashford is our top goal scorer. Nine goals, rating 7.2, assisted three out of 20 games. So it's not a bad start, uh, stat. Uh, of course, Holland has a better stat, but Rashford is doing a lot for this team. He's doing a lot for the scene. Okay, so prediction time. Prediction time. Prediction time. So before I give you my prediction, let me just run down through the lineup here really, really quickly. So David De Gea and Go Wambasaka and Luke Shaw are the fullbacks. In the middle, we have Lissandro Martinez and Rolls Royce Varane, uh, Casemiro and Sabatzer, the new guy. I expect him to start alongside Casemiro. The number 10 is going to be Bruno Fernandez. On the right, we have Anthony. On the left, we have Marcus Rashford. And up top, Toto Anthony Martial. So do let me know in the comment section if you agree or disagree with this lineup. Give you my prediction. So score prediction, drum roll. United to Crystal Palace now. I think having dropped five points in our last two Premier League games, including two points in the reverse fixture against Palace, we cannot afford to drop more points uh, if we actually wish to, to, to finish in the top four. Uh, and I'm really confident that Manchester United will return to winning ways on home soil, Old Trafford, baby, this weekend. And Crystal Palace uh, will be missing star, man, top scorer, Zaha for the trip. Like I said earlier, you're going to be missing the biggest threat they have. So. We should be fine. We should be fine, guys. So definitely we are winning this game 2-0. And I expect Toto, Anthony Martial, and Rashford to get on the score sheet. Do leave your comments in, this, uh, uh, in the comment sections below. What do you think is going to happen? Do you actually agree with the lineup that we have? If you disagree, let me know in the comment sections. What's your best uh, starting 11? And also, score prediction and who do you think is going to score? All that jazz. Dude, let me know in the comment section. And I'm also going to be doing the watch along for this match on Saturday. Uh, so be sure to join us for the watch along. We're going to have a blast. And yeah, thanks again, people. I am out. Peace.